please open with me to James chapter 1, verse 22. I will read it together. James 1, 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Open with me also to Psalm 150, verse 6. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let's read it together. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye. Number one. Praising God is a sign of wisdom. If you want to know somebody who is wise, one of the ways you can tell does this person praise God. Please write it down. I underline it. Praising God is what? It's a sign of wisdom. Because when you praise God, you are saying, God, I know that I'm alive, not by my power. You are saying to God, I know, God, that everything that I have is not by my power or by my effort. It's your gift. Because the reality is, who you are and what you have, everything is a gift. Do you know that your husband is a gift? That man you are fighting all the time, as if you are a wrestler. Do you know that it's a gift to you? I don't know how many women here know that your husband is a gift. That it's not because you are beautiful. It's not because you know how to package yourself. There are, more, there are many women that can package more than you. If you are looking for packaging, hey, you have not seen anything. There are people that will package and package. You will see you almost run mad. And yet some of them don't have husband. But you have. Because God decided to give you a gift. How many men here know that your wife is a gift to you? And yet, that is a woman that you are using to practice boxing. You are using that to practice. If you want to do boxing, go to Olympics. Your children, what are they? They are gifts to you. Your friends, they are gifts to you. Everything in this world that you have is a gift. So when you see somebody who is praising God, that person is acknowledging that God, if not for you, my story will be worse today. That's the sign of wisdom. It's a sign of wisdom because you know that praising God is more powerful than prayers. Write it down. Praising God is what? It's more powerful than prayers. If you have two people, one of them is busy praising God. The other one is busy listing prayer requests. Daddy, prayer request number one, number two, number three. Who is God going to answer first? The one that is praising him. One of the things that the geo taught us, and we are praying for grace to be able to do it. It says if he has one hour, to pray. He spends nothing less than 50 minutes out of one hour to praise God. So out of the one hour, he won't spend more than 10 minutes praying. 50 minutes out of one hour, what does he do? Praising God. A wise person praises God. Because you know that praising God is more powerful than prayer. Why is it a sign of wisdom? Praising God is more powerful than worry. Instead of you worrying that the exchange rate has gone bad, instead of you worrying that you can't pay school fees, why, why don't you spend that time doing what? Praising God. Because your praise will move God more than your complaint. 
You put yourself in the, in the, in the position of God. Anytime somebody calls you, they are always complaining. I hope you know that complaining is prayer request. Do you know that? When somebody calls you and they are complaining to you, what are they doing? They are making a prayer request to you. If you now find that, that this person, whenever the person calls me, is always one complaint or the other. The next time they call you, what will happen? No, just be truthful now. The next time they call you, what will happen? It's either the network will not work that day. Or you just refuse to pick the phone. But there is somebody who calls you and is always saying, thank you for what you did the last time. When they call again, what will you do? Praising God is a sign of, it's a sign of wisdom. Anybody who is wise here, can you shout a loud hallelujah? Anybody that will be wiser, can you shout a louder hallelujah? Number two. Praising God is a commitment, not a feeling. Praising God is what? It is a commitment. It's not a feeling. Because if you want to praise God based on your feeling, there are days and there are times you won't feel like praising God. But when you elevate it to a commitment, you praise God whether you feel like or, or not. I pray for somebody here today. As you make a commitment to praise God, no matter what comes your way, may the wonders of God locate you in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 8, 5, verse 18. Let's open to it very quickly. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. What does it say? In, in how many things? In everything, give thanks. And you see God, Jesus, when he was alive, practiced it. They said to him, your friend is dead. That man that you love so much, Lazarus. Jesus got to the grave. What was the first thing he did? He gave thanks. You are giving thanks at burial in the grave. They said to Jesus, there is no food here. Send these people away. Don't let them come and die here. He said, don't worry. Whatever food you have, bring. And the first thing he did was, he gave thanks. Giving thanks should be what? A commitment. Not a feeling. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Before you get to 25, if you go and study verse 23 and 24, these Christians, especially Paul and Silas, they were preaching, preaching about Jesus. The people didn't want to hear about Jesus. They told them, stop preaching, otherwise we'll deal with you. They kept on preaching. So they brought them. Verse 23 said they first beat them. Maybe take it to verse 23. What did they do? What did they do to them? They first beat them. They are laid many stripes on them. After they finished beating them, verse 24, said they put chains on their legs and they tied them to, to the bars. They tied their legs. And in the night, they started praising God. So the question is, if people, they just finished beating the people that they tie their legs and their hands can praise God. What reason do you have not to praise God? They had every reason to say, God, we can't praise you at this time. But in the prison, with stripes, with their hands tied, the Bible said they got up at midnight and they started singing praises 
unto God. Many of us are not ready to pay the price, but we are looking for the miracles. I pray for somebody here. As you make a commitment from today to praise God, may the power of God work in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So what happened when these people decided to praise God? Verse 26. The miracles began. Because when you praise God, when you have no reason to praise him, wonders begin to happen. Say, so suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were, immediately the doors were, and everyone's bars, everyone's chains were broken. I prophesy upon your life. As you make a commitment to praise God from today, may this change in your favor. May there be a shaking in your favor. As you praise God when it is not convenient, may doors of blessing open unto you. As you praise God when there is no reason for you to praise him, may everything that is holding you down be dis disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. Rise on your feet and say, Father, I will praise you no matter the situation. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. From today, from today, I will praise you no matter my situation. I will praise you when I'm rich. I will praise you when there is no money. I will praise you when I have good health. I will praise you when I'm sick. I will praise you when I am happy. I will praise you when I am sad. I will praise you at all times. Cry to God. I will praise you at all times. I will praise you at all times. I will praise you at all times. Talk to the Lord. In time of plenty, in time of lack, I will praise you. In time of sickness, in times of health, I will praise you. In times of abundance, in times of lack, I will praise you. In time of joy, in time of sorrow, I will praise you. I've made up my mind, Lord. No matter the situation, I will praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. As you choose to praise God, may his wonders manifest in your life. Number three, praising God is more about the future than the past. Those who understand the power of praise, they praise God not because of what has happened. They praise God because of what they want to happen. Please understand the difference. Praising God is about the future, not the past. Because if you are looking at the past and they just sacked you from your office, you will not want to praise God. If you are looking at the past and you don't have money to pay school fees, you may not want to praise God. But if you are focusing on the future, that there is a God in heaven that can take care of you, you will praise him. Paul and Silas praised God. Not because of the prison they were in, but because they know there is a God in heaven that can set them free. Do you understand? Praising God is about the future, not the past. So if you are going through a crisis and somebody is asking you, you are still praising God, tell them I am praising him, not because of what I have gone through, but because of what I expect from the Lord. A good example is Job. Job chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Job 2, verse 9 to 10, if you can put it on the screen. Job lost everything anyone can, can ever lose. He was reduced to nothing. He lost his business. He lost his property. He lost his, his, his farm. He lost everything. And then he lost his health. The Bible said Job sat down and his body was filled with sore. It became so bad 
the wife of Joe said to him, verse 9, you can see on the screen, this man, you still retain your integrity with everything that you have lost. Your business has collapsed. All the houses you ever built in your life, every one of them has collapsed. All your children are dead. All, not some, all. Your children are dead. You are still praising God? The wife said to Job, curse God and die. In other words, say to God, God, you are a bad God. God, you are a wicked God. Curse him and die. That, that was the advice the wife of Job gave Job. Because she was looking at the past. Job answered and said, why do you speak like a foolish person? Verse 10. Why, why, why do you speak like a foolish person? The God we serve is a God of seasons, times and seasons. Show me anybody in the Bible that didn't go through problems. Show me one now. One. 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 Just show me one person in the Bible that didn't go through problems. God uses the problem to train us. What does he do with the problem? I have told you before. Think of a child. Your child, because you love your child, you were giving for the bottle, for the bottle, and then the child is not 10 years old. You are still giving him for the bottle. After a while, you put pepper in the mouth of the child. The child will cry. But let the child cry. Give pepper. After a while, give bone. But if you keep giving ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, five years old, ice cream, 10 years old, ice cream, 20 years old, ice cream, 40 years old, ice cream, the guy won't be able to walk, he will be falling down. Don't you understand? Eating bone is part of it. Eating pepper is part of it. That's why God says, all things work together for good. If you are a, a real mature Christian, when you are going through difficulty, ask God to show you the benefit of that difficulty. And you will see. If you are smart enough, ask him, God, what is the good in this? And you will see. Now, the story of a Christian, a very good Christian, did everything he could. Everything was going fine. And all of a sudden, they lied against him. I don't know if you have had that testimony. They lied against him. What he didn't do, they lied against him. And then before you know it, they arrested him. And then they locked him up in jail. But God was trying to hide him. Because while he was in jail... Some people sent hired assassin to go and kill him. They got to his house. He was not there. Where was he? In jail. God was hiding him. Can hired assassin find you in jail? Rise on your feet and say, God, open my eyes. Make me wiser. Make me wiser. Make me wiser. Sometimes when evil happens, it's for your good. Make me wiser. I praise you not because of the past. I praise you because of the future. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you not because of the past, but because of what you will do in the future. Praising God is about the future, not the past. The grace to praise Him concerning the future, receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray a dangerous prayer for you. Where there is a bigger thing for you, where there is a bigger thing waiting for you, the grace will allow the doors of the present to close. May God give it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. If I had stayed in those places, the place that I was, enjoying America, I will never, never, never be where I am today. Because there is a God in heaven. 
the covenant keeping God. I prophesy upon your life the grace to praise Him, even when it seems there is no reason to praise God. Receive that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to accept a closed door. When God decides to close a door, that door that you love so much, that blessing that you love so much, the day that God decides to stop it and close it, may you have the wisdom to ask God for the new in the mighty name of Jesus. And the God that keeps covenant, may that God not fail in your life in Jesus' name. Number four, the final point for today as I close. Praising God is the evidence of a living soul. You know, the sermon is titled Evidence of a Living Soul. If you want to know who is alive, as far as God is concerned, check their praise life. Psalm 150 verse 6 says, everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. God is saying, the only way I will know that you have breath in you is if you praise, praise the Lord. Take this down. Dead people can't praise God. Write it down. Dead people can't praise God. God. Dead people, they can't praise God. There's no amount of praise and worship you go and sing in the mortuary. They will not answer. No matter how anointed you are as choir, go to the grave and begin to sing. They won't answer. Dead people don't praise God. But the living, the living can praise God. So the way to show the category you belong, the only way to show that you are still alive is by praising God. So I challenge you here this morning and those that are listening to me online, if you are alive, rise on your feet and begin to praise God. If you are alive, in your own words, begin to praise Him. You don't need a choir to praise God. You don't need anybody to sing for you to praise God. If you are alive, praise the Lord. Dead people cannot praise God. But people that are alive can praise Him. In your own words, praise Him. In your own words, praise Him. Dead people can praise God. Dead people cannot praise God. But the living, the living, the living can praise God. The living can praise God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. While you are still standing on your feet, I want to share these two passages with you. And then I make the altar call. While you are still standing. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. Put it on the screen. I will read it word for word. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Say so you can look at us at the appearance, nothing is working. But inside of us, our inner man is renewed day by day. Numbers, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for the moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That what he's saying that this affliction you have, this problem, this trouble, they sacked you from the office. Uh, your husband is giving you stress. Your children are, are going, you know, off the track. You just keep praising God. Keep praising God. So the light affliction is for a moment. But it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 
verse 18, the last verse. Why is that? Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not are eternal. The strength of your Christian life is determined by what you look at. The strength of your Christian life is determined by what you look at. If what you are looking at, what is going on around you, you will suffer a lot of sorrows. But times will change, times are good things or bad things. If you look at what is going on around you, you will not be a very strong Christian. But if you focus on what is permanent, like I pray every morning, I say, Lord, if today is my last day, please let me come home gloriously. I pray it every, I'm not afraid to die. I pray every morning. If today is the last day, Father, help me to come gloriously. And I say as I pray in the morning, God, help me to live like a pilgrim, knowing that this world is not my home. I pray it every morning. Help me to live like a pilgrim, knowing that this world is not my home. That's what this is saying. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, the last verse for today. First Corinthians 15, verse 19. First Corinthians 15. Let's read it together. If in this world only we have hope, we are of all men. Most miserable. If everything that you are looking for is here, you are going to be a miserable person. But if the Spirit of God is in you, because what makes you a living soul is whether the Spirit is in you, pointing your attention to eternity. Because if you are looking at eternity, no matter what is going on, you will still praise God. All eyes closed. You are here this morning. Say, Pastor, pray for me, pray with me. I want to surrender my life to Jesus because now I know that it's not about the present, it's about the future. It's not about what is happening to me, but what is happening inside of me. Because no matter what happens, I will laugh last. No matter what happens, I will. So you are here and say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to surrender my life to this God. Please come. I want to pray with you. Please come. God is saying, when you surrender your life to me, I will keep you in my hands. And nothing, nothing can ever pluck you out of my hands. So you are still here. You are saying, should I go? Should I not come? It depends on you. If you put your life in the hands of God, you will laugh last. Please come. Let me pray with you. Those of you in front, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. And those of you online, please say the same thing after me if you are surrendering your life. Please be the Lord of my life. Hold me, Lord, in your hands. Let not the enemy pluck me out of your hands, O oh God. No matter what comes my way, Father, help me to laugh last. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.